I thought I'd make a, a brief video on the uh, Muse headband, which is something I've had for a while. This is the Muse S. I didn't open it for ages, but um, really I wanted to get it to try out doing analysis of kind of EEG signals. And this is probably one of the top commercial products that you can get out there. So Muse has got a few other um, variations, but for sleep tracking, this kind of like seems to be the obvious choice because it has this kind of, um, you know, fabric band rather than the kind of more rigid um, frame that you get on the Muse 2. So like I said, it's a it's a fabric brand that you've got here and then um, along them you've got these flexible sensors all along. So the, these ones in the middle will obviously be your frontal lobes um, and then these kind of go behind your ear. Um, so there's plenty of videos in terms of like how you use this, how you put it on. So I'm not going to go into mad detail around, around that, but I'll give you a quick overview of some of it. So and then Basically, this pod thing at the front is kind of where everything happens. It's quite, I, I do quite like how it kind of attaches and detaches from the from the strap. But anyway, so as I say, this is basically the core of the, um, of the device. It's got the heart rate sensor here on the side, which I guess is like a supplementary metric that you can have uh, to baseline things against. There's also a gyroscope and accelerometer in here. And then there's connectors in here on either side for uh, all of the different uh, EEG sensors. Um, so all of the processing will obviously take place in here. In terms of the software that you get uh, with Muse, they've got an app that you can get on iOS and Android. Um, and there's kind of two sections to it. One is around meditation. The other side, the other aspect of it is sleep, which is kind of a newer thing that they've been working on. And is probably more tailored to the Muse S. So I can't imagine how you'd wear a Muse 2 to sleep. But if I start from the, on the meditation side, yeah, it's interesting. So what they do is they don't really show you things like uh, alpha and beta brain waves and, and that kind of detail or, or give you kind of any metrics that relate directly back um, to EEG or HR data. What they, what they do is they give kind of custom metrics. So for example, you get things like Muse points, birds and recovery. So recovery relates to how well um, you can kind of recover back from distractions and muse points are uh, something that you kind of consistently earn throughout a meditation session. And then birds you'll see come up when um, you've been in a meditation session for a long enough period without being distracted. So they'll kind of give you a little trigger to help you recognize that you're generally uh, in a good place. And then, as I say, they don't show you alpha, beta and delta brainwaves, but I presume what they've got there, active, neutral and calm is... Um, you know, some kind of derivative of that. I guess they take some aggregates of uh, the the EEG readings to to bring that together. So, yeah, I think they've the, you, they've brought it all together in in one simple view. Nothing to complain about here. I think it they've done a pretty good job with that. And I think for most people that are looking to get more statistics around their meditation and how well they're doing in terms of progress, being able to look back at particular sessions, this is kind of what you'd want to look at. Uh, the the next thing I'll move on to is the is the sleep metrics that you get, which is a bit of a newer feature that they've been working on. It gives you uh, the kind of thing you'd want to see when you uh, when you get out from from sleep, which is uh, basically a hypnogram. So it can, you can see uh, REM, deep sleep, and light sleep patterns. The only issue I had with it, it was real broken a lot of the time. So there'd be uh, quite big gaps in there and I guess you can kind of expect it like I say even when I was meditating there was some noise in the signal so it's that's just amplified when you're sleeping you're moving around you know your head's not still the the band's going to be moving about and it is real sensitive to movement when you're calibrating the the device so it's not surprised I had gaps in there um, the other thing that it, it shows is levels of deep sleep. It it looks like it can recognize deep sleep a lot better than the other states. Um, so delta waves, is, it seems quite like it's it, it's it's quite good at picking those up. And the reason why I think that's the case is because they have a separate metric that they call out specifically for uh, deep sleep, and you can see you know quite a detailed line graph along there. Um, whereas you don't really get that for any of the other brain waves. Um, there's also additional uh, data that they give you around uh, your heart rate and everything because as I a, as showed a on the device, there is a HR sensor. And then they've also got things like sleep position and the stillness as well. And they aggregate everything up into overall sleep score as well, um, which I guess gets better the more often you use it in terms of the uh, quality of the metric. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the uh, core app in a nutshell. Uh, there's obviously... A lot more detail you can go into it in terms of um, the guided meditation and the guided sleep that you get 
Um, I think it's at the right level for a consumer, although personally I'd like to see a bit more uh, level of detail. Um, I wouldn't expect that from the from from this product anyway. So there are third party tools at least. Um, they were quite good enough to make an SDK for this uh, device. Uh, they did a good job with that. Um, and so I'll talk a bit about uh, Mind Monitor, which I've been using more recently. Um, I didn't really use the the Muse app for that long. I I got this uh, Mind Monitor quite quickly, and it works really well. There's a there's a few tabs that you get in there, so you can view spectrogram. You can also see these brain waves like I'm doing there, kind of in absolute terms. It's probably easier in a lot of ways. Um, you can see raw EEG data as well. I don't know how useful that is, but you you know if you wanted to, you can see it that way. There's a there's a couple of different options basically. Um, and then obviously there's a settings tab uh, where you can configure kind of the sampling rate, uh, where you want to export data if you're going to record it and that kind of thing, which I'll, I'll come to in a minute. In the spectrogram here, you can actually see um, I'm kind of intentionally doing things in here like uh, moving my eye and or jaw clenching. Um, and, and I'm just trying to see, you know, kind of how that registers um, on the uh, spectrogram. So you can see these kind of like uh, red uh, power bands that kind of like resonate across different frequencies so yeah quite a significant marker there um the reason i wanted to see that was because uh later when i export sleep data then i can kind of get an idea of what that will look like um the other thing is that red line that kind of goes down from uh, 50 hertz all the way down that's probably because i was near a power socket or just the electrical lines near in my house uh, so that's pretty common. If you really do find it annoying, you can actually cut that off with a notch filter in the advanced settings. I've been a bit lazy and just not done that here, really. I can kind of learn to ignore it. In terms of tools to use to view uh, EEG data, like I said, if you want to see things like a spectrogram kind of image, then you're going to need the uh, to sample at a full sample rate, um, which you can configure in um, Mind Monitor to do that. Uh, it's going to be quite a massive file. The way it works is it, it doesn't store that all directly on your phone. Um, once it's finished recording, you end the session, it will upload it to uh, you know the, any of your kind of cloud hosting solutions that you use. My one in particular is Dropbox. It worked pretty well with that. Um, I don't think I've tried it with anything else. I might have tried it with Google Drive. I can't remember. But I know with Dropbox, it definitely, definitely worked fine. So in, to in terms of the spectrogram tools I use, it's mostly everything you'd normally use for audio, really. So you can use Audacity. I'm sure a lot of you would be familiar with that. There's another tool I got, which is an uh, image I got in front of me here, is um, Spec. I didn't do too much research on it. There's probably a whole bunch more better tools that you can use to kind of alter the view and just enhance the different frequencies that you want to see. Um, the other thing I did not too long after these tools was look at um, some other scripts that you can um, clean up the data with or just enhance certain areas that you want to see. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail on here, but there's plenty of resources on YouTube and online around things like multi-taper, spectral analysis, and, uh, and also different types of wavelets that you can use um, if you look up Morlet waves. And if you go to my GitHub page, which I'll link in the description, you'll see there's a, there's a couple of uh, tools that I use that are based in Python. And this image is an export from one of those tools. And you can see it's scaled and looks more appropriate for uh, brainwaves than the audio based tools I was, I was showing before. It's probably still a bit more work to do in terms of enhancing that and making it look a bit clearer, but it's kind of work going along the right track. And this is zoomed out uh, for an overall view of sleep over seven hours. When you zoom in and look at it at an hourly level, it's a bit clearer to see, you know, where areas of um, light and dark sleep are. It'll be a bit more obvious when you zoom in, but so sometimes at this high level, it's also good to get and like an overall view as well and you can see those red lines again that kind of run uh, vertically across at certain stages and you can those are good markers for understanding you know certain sleep stages as well this is data from a partial sleep session using the mind monitor graph that they have in the website you can see it's real spiky here eh? this would work a lot better for kind of shorter duration like meditation sessions but for sleep it's it's quite a lot to condense and there's no real way to kind of average that out um, or get trend lines but there is an Excel macro that you can add in that you can get directly from the website as well. And that's what that looks like here. Um, so yeah, this is, this is definitely much clearer. And then this is using my own, I, I've made my own Python script that just exports what I need from the mind monitor file. And these are relative brain waves. I've also put, uh, I think that was either the gyro or the accelerometer at the bottom just so it gives a reference for movement. I, I did have another file, which I've lost, which had um, HR, 
heart rate info in there as well. So you can get that all directly from the export. And that's just handy to have just against the brain waves, just to help get a holistic view of everything from, you know, all the data points that you've got available on the, on this device. So I think I've spoken uh, enough about some of the strengths and weaknesses around the, the device and uh, the software that you get. Um, overall, I would recommend it. I do think it's helped out with analysis on uh, sleep and meditation for my own personal use. It is an expensive device, no doubt. I don't think I'd use it as a primary source of info. So if you don't already have a wearable that tracks things like heart rate variability, heart rate, obviously, and respiratory rate. So if you've got pulse oximeter, I think those those three are kind of, they're going to get you, you're going to get more consistent data from that than you will from um, the EEG signals that you get from a Muse band. So I do think it's more of a, a supplementary um, met, uh, kind of data set that you get. Um, but yeah, you know, the more info you get from different areas, the better, I suppose. And I guess it's a shame in that sense, because obviously EEG data, when it comes to sleep analysis, that's the gold standard by which to, to go by in a clinical setting. But um, at the moment, from like just a consumer device level, the wearables that you have to monitor those three kind of metrics I was talking about before, i.e. heart rate variability and so on, those are a lot more consistent, a lot more reliable. These are going to take a little bit more time. So definitely still, um, you know, as long as these are, these Muse bands have been in the game, uh, you'd still be an early adopter um, with this kind of technology if you were to buy the Muse S uh, even in 2021. So as always, I've got links um, and more details on my blog post and GitHub to all the other resources that I mentioned. So things like Mind Monitor, the script that I made just to kind of filter uh, data from uh, from the app, and then also um, a link to a Python script that I used for multi-taper spectral analysis. So hopefully that is useful to some of you.